All right, first and foremost, we give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim, Rakakwadash. The blindness to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and who is worthy to be counted for the blinders. And peace and salutation to you brothers out there pushing the truth wholeheartedly and sincerely in flow of the gospel. It's the brother Gabario from the Indiana camp. Come back to you again with another sit down. Uh, to basically talk about a fire shut, a fire shut in my bones. All right. Now, if you're familiar with the scripture, you, you know, it's in the uh, book of Jeremiah. And it was Jeremiah actually speaking um, when he was going into uh, when he was commanded to preach against Israel. All right. Um, and they wasn't receiving him. They wasn't receiving him. And he was so basically mad and so furious with indignation at, at, the, at the house of Israel for not receiving his words that he was going to say, you know what? I want these niggas to die. You know, I, I, I'm a keep from I'm, I'm a keep from 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 preaching to these niggas. Not saying that he was tired of of the truth or tired of of preaching, but he was so mad at, at the point where he didn't he didn't want to tell them what was going to happen because he wanted to see the fall. He wanted to see the destruction of Israel at the time. That's how mad he was, you know. But in in the same breath, he came to realize like he can't withhold himself. He can't basically just keep this to himself. You know, and 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 it was like a fire in them. You know, it was like a it was like a zeal. All right, it was it was something that 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 couldn't be contained within him within his mental. All right, where he needed to go give that release out. All right. Um. So with that, you know, being said, we're gonna we're gonna read it and then we're gonna hop into it. This is Jeremiah chapter twenty, and verse um, in verse nine, it says, "Then I said, I will not, I will not make mention of him." nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire. It's like as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. All right. So, you know, as I said, man, this is Jeremiah basically saying that he would not make mention of the Lord's of the Lord's, but it says what it was a fire. It was a, it was a burning fire in his in, in his heart. All right. Which is talking about what his mind which basically means he's, he became weary. All right. So just imagine, you know, just imagine you, you, you know, you've been doing something for so long and then you just abruptly stop cold turkey. It's going to be hard for you to, you know, kick that habit because you're so used to doing it. All right. Your mind is going to be set on it. You know, you'll be like, you'll be thinking like, damn, I've been doing this so long and I can't shit. I've been doing this so long. I can't I can't really stop, you know. So it, it's it's like it comes to a, a it comes to an um. It comes to a, a, a point where, you know, you'll either have one a relapse, which you're going back and doing it again, or, or you're going to you're going to basically drive yourself insane, you know. So and the reason why I'm bringing this out is because this is the type of spirit that we all every single one of us should be in, man. All right. If you've gone a few days without doing videos, you know, OK, cool, but. Really, to be honest, you shouldn't be letting no more than probably four days go without you doing a video, man. Nah. All right. If you're constantly watching videos, reading, you know, constantly in the spirit. Listen, I'm gonna even, I'm gonna even say if you're watching videos and reading, the spirit alone. If you're if you're constantly uh, uh, dwelling in the spirit, the spirit is gonna give you topics. I'll be at work, be full set on work, and then just I just be thinking about the scriptures, and then boom, I have a topic out of nowhere. You know, not saying that I'm holier than thou. You know, I'm not saying I'm better than anybody. You know, because I have blockage too. I have sometimes where the spirit's not really dealing with me, and I'm not can't really think of a video topic or whatever. You know, but that, but just because I can't think of a video topic doesn't mean I'm gonna not make videos. Like, oh well, I can't think of a topic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do a video next time I think of a topic. Like, no, you know, sometimes, hey, Apostle Tahar says sometimes you just need to press the button and just go. You know. Pastor Rakai was down here this weekend. He just said, hey, listen, we're just going to go. We're going to call it an a, a open forum and, and just go. You know, whatever scriptures you got, and just, just go into it, you know? So, and then guess what? After that, guess what? The spirit is going to flow, and then boom, you're going to have a whole lesson at the end, you know? So, what I'm basically trying to hammer down, or the point I'm trying to hammer is, you know, is that zeal and that fire is something that, that I ain't gonna say that should, we should even be desiring, but something that just should be up in us already. All right, we all have a zeal and a desire for something. Something in this world you have a zeal and desire for, whether that's women, your job, fucking uh, eating, whatever, whatever it is, man. You know, working out, fucking TV, movies. 
just relaxing, sleeping, you know, whatever you have a desire for or, or a zeal is something that you're spending majority of your time doing. I would say probably a good 50 to 60 percent of your time throughout the day is doing. You should have the same zeal for this truth like that. All right. This truth, you know, you got to think it, 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 it uh, everything that's compared to this truth, the, the, everything that the truth is compared to in the scriptures is all necessities of life. All right. It's compared to food. It's compared to water. You know, it's compared to uh, air, uh, breath, you know, it's compared to uh, uh, um, it's compared to wine. You know, it's compared to uh, to women. You know, now I'm not saying you need women in your life, but, you know, you know the Lord created women for a man, you know, so you're not going to abhor it. You're not going to you know forsake a woman. But, you know, in order for you to reproduce, you need a woman. So, hey, this this truth is compared to basically very necessity things. Uh, uh, oh, it's compared to fire. You know, the, the, the you know this truth is compared to a lot of necessities uh, in life. All right, first and foremost being water. You know, everybody needs water. Everything needs water. You know, living animals, plants, us. You know, everything needs water. You know, and the truth is, is compared to that, man. Matter of fact, in the Book of Job, is it, it compares uh, the truth to all the precious stones and the precious minerals in the earth. You know, and it says that yeah, well, gold and silver has a place in the earth. But the truth, it only has one source, and it comes from who? Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. All right? So how much more, if you can find gold and silver in the earth, it might be, you know, tedious to find, but if you can still find it, how much more rarer should be the truth? How much more precious should be the truth when it only comes from one source? Gold and silver, you can get that from probably 50 to 60,000 mountains or going, uh, or going to a crevice and find some gold and silver. But how much more the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, man? How much more of that? When you only have one source to find that, all right. Um, oh, matter of fact, the scripture right here, this this compares the truth being as a as a woman, man. This is Proverbs chapter five and verse 19. It says, Let her let her be as a loving hind and in a pleasant row. It says, Let her breast satisfy thee at all times, and be thou ravished always with her love, man. Right. That's talking about wisdom. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of you. How about you shot, man? You should always be desiring this truth, man. It should be running rampant in your mind. Matter of fact, in the book of um, Wisdom of Solomon, it says she shall meet him in every thought. That she is talking about what? Wisdom. All right. She's going to meet him in every thought. That means every decision that you make, you're always going to think about, man, how is this going to affect my relationship with Yahweh Hashem Yahshua? Is this going to be a hindrance? Hey, I might be able to do it, but guess what? The scripture says everything that they experience is not lawful, you know, or is everything that's lawful is not expedient. I think that's that's how it goes. You know, so yeah, just because I can do it doesn't mean is is it a right place and time for me to do this? All right. Um. This is uh, Psalm chapter fifty one and verse eight. It says, "Make it says make me to it says make me to hear the joy of gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Create me in a clean heart, O God." And renew a right spirit within me. It says, cast me not, cast me not away from thy presence. It says, and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me joy of thy salvation and uphold me with the free, with thy free spirit. Right. This is uh, basically, um, this is King David talking to the Lord, man. He said, what? Take not thy Holy Spirit away from him, man. All right. Because that's one thing. Hey, uh, what does it say? Job, Job said, uh, no, it wasn't Job. I think it was Paul. Paul said, uh. It could have been, yeah, it was Paul. It says, curse, curse, curse me if I preach not the gospel, man. All right. So one thing that we we constantly pray for, one thing that we're constantly uh, 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 desiring is that the Lord keeps his spirit on us. All right. That the Lord, uh, 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 that the Lord uh, 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 constantly keeps dealing with us, constantly has us th that, that drive, man. And how you know the Lord is dealing with you, how you know the, Lord, uh, the spirit is dealing, uh, dealing with you is that drive. That drive that you have, you know, the motivation, the uh, the, the the strength to able to get up in the and, and, and get up in the morning and be like, yeah, now nah, it's a new day. I can make a video. It's a new day. It's a new day to praise you. How about you? It's a new day to go out to camp. We going to camp today, man. All right. And I'm excited for it. I can't wait. Every time, every time camp rolls around, man, I always can't wait. I, I get excited every single day, man. And I've been doing this for roughly about 14 years. And every single day, it's time for camp. I get excited. I've, I've, I've denied certain jobs. And this isn't a, a boast about me and about what I, you know, this is just basically a, a quick testimony. But I've denied certain jobs 
because it falls on camp day. Some pretty decent jobs. I'm like, you know what? Okay, I can't. No, I can't do that because I have I have religious beliefs for that day on a certain, on a certain amount of time. And they say, oh well, you know, hopefully, you know, you know, hopefully you find what you're looking for, you know. And the Lord's made a way every every single time. All right, He's made a way out every single time. Whether I don't work on the day all in, to, in total, or I'm getting off a couple hours before it's, it's it's time for me to go to camp, you know. But whatever it is, man, the Lord's gonna make a way for you, man. All right. Shit, I remember it was a, it was a, it was at one point, man. I didn't have a babysitter for my kids. I had to bring them to camp with me, you know. Of course, they they remained in the car and in, in, in my in, in my uh, vicinity, you know. I had to bring a tablet, uh, uh, uh bring a you know bring a tablet, an iPad or whatever for them to watch cartoons on it, you know. Make sure the windows are down, and it was always in my vicinity. I just didn't. It's not like we went downtown and I parked them in a parking lot and I walked halfway across the block. Like no, every everywhere that we camped at. Uh, 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 it was in it, like it was in a parking lot of a uh, of a Walmart or a parking lot of a uh, of a well, not Walmart a Walgreens or a CVS or something, and I could park right there by the corner and they're in my vicinity as we as we as we're teaching, you know. But hey, it, it, it didn't came times to that man, where I actually had you know my kids in the car as while I was while I was camping, you know. But the point that I'm trying to make is. Having a zeal and having that drive is how you know the Lord is, is, is supping with you. The Lord is dealing with you, you know, because if you, once you feel that drive going away, once you feel that 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 that, that zeal is is, is 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 dwindling, then guess what? You're starting to you're starting to become lukewarm, and then eventually you're gonna become cold, man, because the Lord is gonna spew it out of His mouth if you become lukewarm. All right, if you're not on fire, that's why Apostle Hart constantly talks about being on fire, continuously on fire, you know. This is a uh, Sirach chapter six verse nineteen. It says, "Come unto, come unto her, as one that ploweth and soweth, and wait for her good, or for her good fruit. For thou shalt not toil much in labor in laboring about her, but thou shalt eat of her, her fruits right right soon. She is very pleasant. And this is she is of course is talking about wisdom and knowledge and understanding. It says she is very pleasant to the unlearned and Second, she is very unpleasant, unplea unpleasant to the unlearned. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. See, it says she will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial, and he will and he will cast her from from him from him error and be long. For wisdom is according to her name, and she is not manifest to many. Give ear, see. So it goes back into that rarity and that preciousness, man. She is not manifest to many. So it just shows you what, man, this truth, this wisdom is rare. It's rare, especially having a 100% truth, you know? It says, give ear, my son, receive my advice and refuse not my counsel and put thy feet unto her fetters and thy neck into her chains. Right, man, what, man, basically be a slave, be a captain unto her, you know? Anything you're a slave, you're a captain to, you tend to do it almost on a daily basis, all right? Like, for example, taking showers and brushing your teeth and probably combing your hair or whatever, you know, your daily, you know, your daily uh, 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 grooming session. You know, those are things you do religiously. Those things you do uh, like, like, like you're almost a slave. You know, you get up and you do the same routine. You know, it says it says bow down thy shoulder and bear her and be not grieved with her with her bonds. Come unto her with the whole heart and keep her and keep her away with all thy power and keep her and keep and keep her ways with all thy power. So you. It says, search and seek and she shall be made unto thee. So like, and she shall be made unto unto thee. And when thou has gone and when I have got hold of her, let her not let her not go. It says, for at the last thou shalt find her rest. And it shall be turned into joy. See, man, so it's, yeah, it's, when you get into this truth and, when, and you start waking up, man, it's going to be a little toil. You know, you're going to have to toil a little bit. You have to work and have a little labor. You know, you're going to have to put some work into it. But what the scripture says, it says what? For at that last thou shalt find her rest and it shall be turned into joy. So guess what? This truth is going to be turned into joy. We're going to, we're, we're, we're happy every day to be in it. But right now we're, we're, we're working. All right. We're in the working process. You know, we're not, we're not really receiving anything, but it's, but it's an investment. Now the thing is about investments is anything that you, any, an investment is anything that you're putting into it. You're not going to reap rewards right away. All right. You're not going to reap the benefit of it right away. Matter of fact, it goes into my favorite plant, which is the bamboo plant. 
And the reason why it's my favorite plant is because the seed that you plant, when you plant bamboo, it takes five years for it to break the soil. All right. So it, so just imagine you sit in there. Let's say you put a uh, put a, bl- a, a bamboo uh, a plant in your backyard. You know, you, you, you plant like maybe five rows of bamboo and you have to sit there and water it, make sure it gets enough sunlight and make sure the soil is good enough. Make sure uh, uh, that 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 plot of grass, uh, that plot of uh, land is taken care of for five years before you start seeing bamboo sprout, uh, 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 sprout and, and breaks the ground. But when it does break the ground, it's the fastest growing plant on earth. It grows six centimeters a day, which is one of the fastest growing plants on earth. And you can use bamboo for fucking anything. You can build houses. You can build pipeways. You can use it as weapons. You can use man, bamboo is very, very utilized in, in different in different type of agricultural ways, man. All right. You can use it as a containing water. I think you even can cook in it. I think you I think I seen a person make a bamboo bowl and cooked and cooked in it, you know. But what I'm saying is I attribute that to faith, something that you have to constantly be diligent in, something that you have to constantly be attentive to. And then after and then after you receive its rewards, its rewards is something like you've never seen before. You know, yeah, you might. Pl- I think uh, uh, I think if you plant a strawberry tree, it takes about about three to six months before you to start reaping strawberries. You know, so that's something that's kind of, you know, all plant all plant life is going to be investment because you have to put. But certain plants grow faster than others. I think it's one plant that goes, you know, you'll be able to, to, to get. I don't know what fruit it is, but. It's something that you'll be able to, to yield the fruit in it within two months of it. You know, I forgot exactly what, what is it, but it's something that, yeah, if you plant it one month, all you have to wait is 60 days and you'll be able to start eating from that, from that, um, from that, from that specific fruit, you know, but this truth is, is, it's a long run, man. It's a marathon, not a, not a, not a, not a, uh, not a, uh, a hundred meter dash or anything, man. It's a marathon. So the more that we put into it, the more, the longer that we go, and then when eventually when we do receive our reward, that reward is going to be something that we've never imagined, man. Something that we never can even fathom. All right. Something that that that, that is going to be is going to look like, man. Uh, it seems like you know just imagine. And then when, and, when, and, and, and going back to the bamboo analogy, once you plant that, once you plant that seed and the bamboo is going to just keep growing. Like you don't have to worry about it. It's, 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 it's once it's, once it starts coming, it's going, man, listen, just imagine it grows six centimeters every day. So within a week what's six times seven, 56, six, yeah, six times seven. I think that's 56. Yeah. So 56. So it just imagine 56 centimeters within a week, you know? Shit, uh, was it 72? 7 times 12? Yeah, no, 6 times 12. 6 times 12 is 66, 67, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yep, so six, 72 centimeters a week. Every 12 days. Every 12 days, it grows 72 centimeters, you know? That's that's beneficial, man, you know? And you'll be able to chop it down, do what you need to do, get some more, you know? Come back in another month or two and get some more, you know? It's going to be, it's going to, it's going to fulfill your desire. It's going to fulfill everything that you need to be done. Everything is going to, it's going to scratch every itch that you have, man. You know, whatever, whatever reason you was building, you, every reason you was, you was growing bamboo, you know, shit, you can cut it down and sell it, you know, because certain people, they might not want to wait that day. He's like, oh, fuck it. We know, oh, oh, you know, old dude up the street, he, he grows bamboo. We could just get it from him, you know, and you'll have a whole monopoly on, on the whole business because what? Bamboo takes so long to grow. So even if a person did start, they saying, damn, how much money? is all, oh, bro, I'm the only bamboo seller in, 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 in the city. So all people that needs bamboo, they, they got to come to you. And if, and if somebody do want to start, then guess what? They're going to have to uh, uh, plant the bamboo and they got to wait five years in order for theirs to start growing and then, and then so forth and so forth. But in them five years, everybody going to come to you because there's no cheeky way to get into, uh, into growing uh, bamboo. You know, you can't, there's no side cut to it, you know, but that was just an analogy I want to use for the bamboo. But anyways, attribute that to faith, man. There's no side way to get to faith, man. When, you know, there's no side back door. If you're doing everything the right, direct and correct path, man, guess what? When the Lord eventually comes back and reward and give us our reward is going to be something that we never can fathom, you know, more than our hearts to desire, man. All why? Because what? We, we we tend unto wisdom and we kept the word of his patience. All right. It says, for there is a there is a golden ornament. So I can, it says, then shall thy feathers. Be, uh, it says, then shall her. Oh, here, 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 this, is, this is a good point to it. It says, then shall her feathers be a strong defense for thee and her chains 
a robe of glory. See, so the so the bondage things that you had, you then you know it says what the yoke of iron around your neck and the chains around you know put her fetters and your feet. Those are going to be changed into badges of honor. You know, it says what uh, uh, her feathers changed into a defense and her and her and her changed into her robes of glory, man. You know, badges of honor. It says for there is a gold ornament upon her and her and her bands are purple laced. Thou shalt put her on as a robe of honor and shall put her about with a crown of joy. So now, you know, because now guess what? You're going to be uh, renowned. These are the men who, who, who stood stiffly for the name of the Lord. You know, these are the men who, who endured hardness. These are the men that went through captivity and still was trying to keep the uh, commands to the best of their abilities. This is these are the men who went on the highways and byways and teach the people. These are the men who fed the Lord's sheep, you know. You're going to get honor. You're going to get glory. You're going to get crowned with, a, with joy with, for all that, man, for all that toil and laboring that you did, you know? So you're going to get, it's not only are you going to get the reward, is you, you're going to get a, a, a healthy and good name behind it, you know? You're going to get an honorable name. Uh, Psalms 119 to 12, it says, Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statues. With my lips I will declare all the judgment of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies. This is as much as in all riches, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. It says, I will delight myself in thy statues. I will not forget thy word. It says, it says, I will not forget thy word. Deal bountiful with thy servant that I, that I may live and keep thy word. See, so let's start. Let's go at the beginning. It says, blessed the Lord. Teach me thy statues with my lips. I would declare all thy judgment of thy mouth. Have rejoice in thy ways. So I can rejoice in the ways of thy testimony. See, so it says what? We bless the Lord and that we, that what? That he teaches his statutes, laws, and commandments, which we've gone to word commandment. It goes into um, precept. Or if you go into precept, it goes into commandments. All right. So wait, we, the, we, 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 we desire to have the, the Lord's, the, we desire to have that wisdom constantly dwelling with us. All right. It says, I will meditate in thy precepts, meditate in thy commandments, and I have respect unto thy way. See, you know, when you have respect for something, you honor it and, and you uh, abide by it. All right. It says, I will not forget thy word. See, so it says what, man? We, we shouldn't be forgetting our word, man. King David said he wasn't going to forget the Lord's word. And so should we, man. That's why the scriptures go so. Every, she shall meet us in every thought, man. All right. It says, deal bountiful with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Yeah, man. You know? That we may live and keep the and keep the Lord's word. All right. This is the last one I got. This is a second. This is a second. This is Titus chapter 2, verse 13. It says, looking for, it says, looking for that blessed, that blessed hope and the glorious appearance of of and the glorious appearing of the great Yahweh and our Savior, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and pure and pure and, and pure and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. See? Zealous of good works. You have to be zealous. Being zealous is being on fire, man. You know? So, like, yeah, I was just checking on my daughter, making sure she was cool. But, yeah, man, you have to be zealous and on fire for this thing, man. All right? But that's all I had, man. Lord, I hope this video was edifying, man. Until next time, man, be on fire, keep doing the work, man, and keep pushing towards the mark. All right? With that, shalom.